This convergence of worlds you brought about has released a threat we sealed away ages ago. But should he ever see the light again in your lifetime? Marvel Future Revolution. What's up, fellow Lords of Gaming? So there we have it. You basically got this video released, and it is the Eternals update for our companion for companions that we're going to be getting in uh, conjunction with the Eternals movie update. We can see Icarus, Cersei, Athena, and. Um, Ajax. No, that's not Ajax. That's a Gilgamesh. Excuse me. So those are most likely the characters we're going to get. Um, it's really weird and kind of funny because Gilgamesh actually looks like uh, Lee. Uh, Richard Madden does not make his appearance look, but Cersei actually looks like Jimachan. And uh, Athena obviously looks absolutely nothing like, um, <laughs> like Angelina Jolie. I'm beginning to wonder if there is something in the comic, uh, in the licensing deal with likenesses and so forth that they can't use things so they can make them look a lot alike. We also have Crow here inside the uh, trailer. So you can see the deviant that they're going to be facing against inside the movie, the main villain. Uh, high res detail on these images with the eternal spaceship over here. Um, there's a couple of scenes so you can still see they've got a very Angelina Jolie-ish looking character inside here. Um, pretty much pulling the same pose that she was inside the films. And then obviously this looks very much like Lee. Um, I think that's his name. I hope I'm not messing that up, Lee. Um, the funny thing that I wanted to draw attention to was specifically, uh, I wanted to show you guys something. So I found this interesting that this was, um, the, the character models. I found them pretty interesting and, um, mostly, um, <clears throat> Mostly I look at them from the um, Marvel Future Fight game, which also just recently got playable characters for Cersei and uh, Icarus and uh, Makari, uh, Lauren Ridloff's character. So my anticipation is that we might end up seeing all of the characters across the game space uh, for the Eternals. Like, for instance, we see him cage basically let it release that we were getting um you know uh, more eternals as we're going by i just cannot for the life of me imagine that we will not end up with the full eternal slate inside moral future fight and that brings up a point that i want to kind of make about what was what we were seeing in game he in game here versus what we're seeing inside this cgi trailer or you know i don't really know what to call it um i, th I guess maybe this is uh in-game footage i don't know but if you look at the uniform for uh for cersei here and you look at the uniforms that we basically got for uh icarus as well they the resolution textures and the looks are there um it's definitely making me wonder about things like um like what i mean by that is i've insinuated quite a bit across you know the game space that the characters are basically, you know, the, this game is pretty much Marvel Future Fight 2.0. And I still kind of feel that way, if I'm being perfectly honest with you guys. Like, I still definitely feel that way. Like, it, but should, it just but feels he ever right in terms see of the light again in your life. Saying the game, you know, like some of the content, especially if we're going to start getting more and more movie updates. And the question I have is how much resources can be reused between the two games in terms of because the art style direction and things like that there's obviously a little bit more texture resolution on the on on the uh inside marvel future revolution but it these are some of the most detailed uniforms that we've seen in a game uh period um and and even in marvel future fight so i'm wondering how much of these resources could be reutilized and rescoped and used it's, it's interesting because even one of um the skills that they basically show obviously is from the movie and from the character skills but a lot of the skills is being used on screen here by cersei and Icarus's but should character. he ever see the light They're again in your lifetime some of the skills that are currently being used for the characters in game uh, Marvel. Overall, I think players are going to be pretty excited about seeing the companion system inside the game. 
uh, regardless of how I feel about it negatively or positively. Um, it's new additional content to the game. I'm hoping that that gets implemented right. Remember, I've said on repeated occasion, especially in my The Good, The Bad and Ugly series, that I feel like a lot of the stuff that's in this game doesn't have a problem with design. I feel like the design is perfect. Um, I feel like the implementation is where we start to get into the bad and then the ugly is the reward system. That's my feel of the whole overall game space. So when you see me make commentary inside the you know videos and stuff like that, specifically talking to, you know, the pay to win uh, gameplay system that they have in here, the art, the the. Uh, depths of and layers of RNG systems, but then the design is obviously one of the reasons why I still play the game. So I like it because of that. Um, it's really interesting. So the companion system should be released next week. Uh, next week, the uh, third, which is Wednesday, which should be interesting. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to it uh, to see what what it's going to bring. Um, one of the things that I want to point out with you guys is uh, is this event that's going on currently, I felt like it was the uh, it's the Halloween event that's going on for the Green Goblin Nightmare System because we know that when we get those um, when we get the uh, the update next week that we're also going to have the uh, a new Epic Invasion. Basically, we're going to have Epic Invasion: The Eternals. We're most likely going to probably be battling against Crow with our companions, and that should be interesting. Do not forget that today we have basically a few hours left inside of the system and you definitely are going to want to jump on these and get those seals crafted because you don't want to lose out. I basically used those to craft what I could and I got the rewards that I could. I'm not in a really good standing ranking for the rewards, but to be honest with you, the ranking rewards didn't really matter in, in terms of what was being offered inside the game for the for the ranking rewards unless you were in the top 10 pretty much. But don't forget to use uh, to finish up those and use your uh, cards and use those crafting events um, because the rewards are there and they're pretty, pretty decent in terms of those. So, like, for instance, my ranking, I'm sitting at about 83. And if you look at the reward list for that, I'm sitting in here about getting five costume co costume draw tickets, which isn't bad. But obviously, you really want to finish in the top four of the 10 players. There was no way I was going to make it there. <laughs> Just absolutely no way. Um, along with that, the event that's currently going on, the Green Goblins uh, Nightmare, um, it's pretty interesting event. They haven't really done much to change it from uh, Dormammu. And to be perfectly honest, um, uh, how do you say this? To be perfectly honest, they didn't even boost the power level and scale the uh, Goblin for the areas. But, you know, it's still a good event, especially when you look at collecting these tokens and being able to jump inside the shop. If you're a free to play player, you want to make sure that you're playing this event every day because coming over here inside the token shop, it's going to be relatively easy for you to get thousand tokens um, over the course of the event. Like I'm already at a thousand tokens. I think we're two days into the event right now and I'm almost at a thousand tokens. I think I'm sitting at like 970 tokens or some shit like that 920. There you go. Um, so being able to get this now, you can only get one per squad, but that green goblin chest does have the ability to drop some items inside here, which should be decent. Hopefully, you know, I mean, even if you just got the five draw tickets for each of those, that's still pretty decent because that just gives you another chance at getting these a lower probably percentage chance, but it's still good. So I think this is probably in terms of the rewards inside here, this is probably one of the better events because you can get more tokens as you uh, roll over the days and stuff like that a ticket so that way you can make draws and so forth obviously nobody wants this this is like leftover <laughs> leftover tokens that if you get so make sure that you're logging in every day and doing those events so that way you can at least be able to collect some more draw tickets and collect some more um get that green goblins chest because it's gone obviously going to help you out inside the game in the long run um i'm looking forward to the eternals uh later on when they release even if they are just companions i've the Eternals are one of those character systems that are, you know, the characters and family of, you know, teams that are inside the Marvel Universe that have been near and dear to me since I first started reading comics. It's one of Jack Kirby's creations. Um, and, you know, I, I really love the characters. Uh, I, I think they're they're underrated and I, f I feel like they are a team that is 
one of those teams that just hasn't really been utilized to their fullest of potential, similar to like the Inhumans, the New Gods, and so forth inside uh, Marvel Universe, uh, DC Comics Universe. I absolutely love the character, so I'm looking forward to see how they get interpreted. Really excited to know that we're going to get Gilgamesh and uh, Athena. We know inside Marvel Future Fight that we're also getting the same characters, which should be good because if you basically look at the epic quest that's currently inside of Marvel Future Fight, let me see if I can show it to you. Ooh, I don't know if I can show it. Can I show it to you guys? I don't think I can show it to you guys. Mm, I feel bad about that. I can't show it to you guys, but basically inside we did get revealed uh, that Athena, A-N, H, and uh, Gilgamesh were going to be part of the epic quest storylines inside there. So it'd be interesting to see when those characters actually come back inside here. So I'm, I'm looking forward to, ah, here it goes. I can't show it to you guys. So we basically have three slots for epic quest characters inside here. Um, we basically have the Cersei storyline, the uh, uh, Icarus storyline, and then Makari's. And then we're going to get three more, obviously, Eternals that are going to fit the storyline as well. So it'll be interesting to see. They actually did some justice for Makari inside this game. So that's pretty interesting, pretty cool as well. All right, guys. Um, I wanted to leave off real quick with telling you guys, thank you so much for helping this channel grow and get to the place that it currently is. I'm really enjoying making content for you guys. Um, it has definitely been not without its, uh, not without its uh, tiresome nights and tiresome days, but I really appreciate all the love, all the support, and all the engagement. It makes streaming when I do stream with you guys that much more easier and more engaging. And um, I appreciate all all of it that you guys do and helping the channel grow let's keep let's keep it going let's steamroll this shit through the new year and uh let's make some more content i'm still gonna bring you guys guardians of the galaxy some spider-man miles morales and normal spider-man peter parker as well just a little i'm trying to get my setup uh for the playstation and stuff like that going with my setup system right now for recording and stuff like that so i have to work through it but until next time guys peace